I know that you're curious. Because when I was in school, like seventh standard, I began to get really curious. I had many, many curious questions. Because when they told me that, you know, the earth is revolving around the sun, I was like, okay, cool. But then they told me that the earth is revolving around the sun at a speed of one lakh kilometers per hour. I almost spit the water in my mouth and I went, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Um, if I go in a car or a bike at like 100 kilometers per hour, I feel it. But I'm going at one lakh kilometers per hour, but why am I not feeling moving? Why am I not feeling motion? And then I learned that uh, the sun itself is revolving around the center of the Milky Way galaxy at more than 8 lakh kilometers per hour. Okay. And the Milky Way galaxy itself is moving across the universe because the universe is expanding at more than like 20 lakh kilometers per hour. And all of these numbers are super big, right? And I was wondering if all of this moving and motion is happening, why am I not feeling it? And more importantly, if everything is moving, what's not moving? There must be some place in the universe that's not moving, right? Where is it? Now, these questions they told me are science questions. But the question I have for you today is, what is science really? Now, is science the facts that we are made to memorize from the science textbook? Then what was science before the textbooks and the schools and the exams were created? Did science come first or did the science textbook come first? Now, to answer what science really is, I'm going to play a very famous game with you. And the game goes like this. I'm going to have a rule in my mind. And I'm not going to tell you what that rule is. But I'm going to give you a three number sequence that fits my rule, right? And your job is to guess what the rule in my head is based on the sequence I give you. Now, but the way you can do this is by coming up with your own three number sequences, as many of them. And then all I'm allowed to do is tell you yes or no. I'll give you an example. Let's say I have some rule in my mind. I don't tell you. And then I tell you three, five, seven. This three number sequence fits my rule. Then what you can do is come up with your own sequence. You don't have to continue it or anything, just whatever it is that you want. For example, you can come up with one, three, five. And all I am allowed to tell you is, yes, it fits my rule or no, it doesn't. So in this case, for example, if you say one, three, five, I'll say, yes, it fits my rule. And then you can come up with something else, maybe 11, 13, 15. And then if you ask me, I would say, yes, it fits my rule. You can keep doing this more and more. And then based on this, you can get closer and closer towards what you think my rule is. And at some point you can guess, hey, is your rule, maybe the rule you have in your mind right now, maybe is like, you know, hey, plus two, plus two, because three plus two is five, five plus two is seven. And you can tell me, and, then, and I would have told you, no, that's not my rule. Uh, in this case, my rule happens to be all three of them are odd numbers, right? So any three odd numbers you've given, you, you told me, I would have said, yes, it fits my rule. Even if you had one even number in it, say two, five, seven, I would have said, no, it does not fit my rule. Now, you're going to play another version of this game, a similar version of this game. You and uh, me and your learning coach have the same rule in our mind. We won't tell you what that rule is, but the three number sequence that fits it is two, four, eight. So you have some simple rule in our mind and 248 fits that. It's your job now to go play with your learning coach, discuss and figure out what the rule we have in our mind is and then let's talk again. Now, whenever I've played this game with anybody, not just students, most of them, most human beings come up with a rule at the beginning itself in their mind. Something like, you know, one of my students actually had a rule that, okay, this guy is multiplying by two. That's the rule he has, two into two is four. 4 into 2 is 8. And then he kept coming up with more and more examples that tried to prove his belief because he believed this. He was like, sir, does 3, 6, 12 fit your rule? I was like, yes, it does. Uh, he asked me, is 10, 20, 40 fit your rule? I said, yes, it does. Does 16, 32, 64 fit your rule? I said, yes, it does. And the more I told him, yes, it does, the more he believed that it must be into 2 into 2. And uh, when he finally asked me, sir, so is it multiplied by 2? No, I'm 100% sure. I said, no, it's not. And then he was like, wait, it really threw him off. And he was like, what am I doing wrong here? And I told him, you're not doing anything wrong here. You're just doing what most human beings do when they have a belief. So when we all have a belief. Most of us have a tendency to look for more and more evidence to prove our belief. We unconsciously, without even realizing it, look for more and more examples that already prove what we believe, that prove what we already believe. It's called, it has a name, it's called confirmation bias. It's a bias that all human beings have towards confirming what we already believe. And that's what I told him. And you would all experienced it before, right? In fact, when I was in school, one of my friends told me, oh, that guy Nickel, he's so arrogant and he's so rude. And until that day, I didn't notice anything about him. But after that, I could say, oh, yeah, yeah. I could start seeing small signs in him. I was looking for evidence that confirmed this belief that my friend had given me. And after a while, I was like, yeah, yeah, man, he is kind of rude. This happened to all of us. 
Now, this is not the end of the world. It's something all human beings do. But the problem with our beliefs is sometimes they are wrong. And if you do care about finding the truth, really, then looking for more and more evidence of what you already believe is not helping. Now, the student asked me, OK, fine, I understand what I'm doing wrong. But what am I supposed to do? And I told him, instead of trying to find hundreds of examples that already prove what he believes, into two, into two, what he needed to have done is find and try and find one example that disproves his belief. For example, all he had to ask me was one question that was like, hmm, I believe it's into two, into two. What if I give something that does not follow that rule? Say four, five, six. That is not multiplying by two. And if he had tried that with me, I told him, I would have said, yes, it follows my rule. And in that moment, the fact that 4, 5, 6 follows my rule would break his belief, would disprove his belief. Now, does that mean he knows what my rule is? No, it doesn't. But at least he's now on the right track because he knows it is not into two. That's not the rule in my mind. And he's already closer to the truth. Now, this is something that we always do. Take something that we believe and try to find more and more examples that prove it. But the real thing to change here is to try and find one example that disproves it. And the moment he got that, he began to try asking examples that were not proving his belief. I said yes for a few, no for a few. And finally, when he tried something that was decreasing, he said like something like six, four, two, and he said it did not fit my rule. He finally guessed what my rule was. Now, do, are you curious what my rule is? My rule is super simple. It's just ascending order. Any three numbers that are increasing fit my rule. So if you told me one, two, three, I would have said yes. Three, four, five, I would have said yes. Any numbers, if it's two, five, two, then I say that's not fitting my rule. Now, he was even a little bit disappointed, probably even a bit angry, because the rule was a lot simpler than he thought. But this happens a lot of times. Because the deeper point we're driving here is, if you want to get closer to the truth, try to disprove the belief that you have. Now, this kind of thing goes way beyond trying to guess number rules. Long ago, there was some human being somewhere, I'm pretty sure, whose path the black cat unfortunately crossed. And then on that day, he had bad luck. He formed a belief for who knows why that the black cat crossing cost his bad luck. And he told this amazing story to more people. He said, you know what, a black cat crossed my path, then you know I had this bad luck. And all of them, thousands of them, looked for thousands of years for more and more belief, evidences that confirm the belief. Yeah, yeah, day before yesterday, a black cat crossed my path, and you know now I also have bad luck. All it needed was one person, one time, to say, hey, I'm just going to take 10 people, make a black cat cross their path without them knowing, and then compare if they had more bad luck than some other 10 people who had no black cat crossing their path. And we would have been much closer to the truth. And the fact that it took us thousands, and probably still takes us thousands of years to break this belief shows us how difficult this might be. So it turns out that this attitude of the moment you believe something, trying to disprove it by playing with the world, by coming up with, coming up with experiments, is the best way to find the truth about the world. And the moment we figured this out, we gave this attitude of disproving things by playing with the world a name. We called it science. So what is science really? Science is just humanity's antidote to confirmation bias. We observed a problem in us and figured out a tool. We invented a tool called science, an attitude, to actually break this thing called confirmation bias. And that's all science is, an antidote to confirmation bias. So a scientist then does not have to be wearing lab coats and handling complex machines to be a true scientist. What he or she needs to do is when Everybody else, the moment they believe something is, are looking to prove it more and more, they try to disprove it. So if you're trying to disprove your own beliefs by playing with the real world, then you are a scientist. So in the next station, I have some opportunities for you to practice this muscle of being a scientist by coming up with your own experiments to disprove some beliefs that have been stated. So play with them and let's, then let's talk again.